Fatin in the Machi school, which is from my uh, Cree social background and uh, Diné culture. Uh, my name is uh, Sapoya Kiesu Ishkweo, and I'm from the Kansas First Nation. And that means Blue Thunderbird Woman. And uh, I'd like to welcome you today to my Treaty 4 territory and to the homeland of the Métis. I'm very humbled and honored to be here today to talk about my nation's alternative energy project. And I do have uh, uh, a close uh, relationship to this project because uh, I had started this project back when I was the Director of Economic Development for my nation in 2005. My background uh, as uh, Carver alluded to, I'm the director of the First Nations Bank of Canada. I also chair the Saskatchewan Indian Equity Foundation, which is a uh, developmental loan company that provides loans to uh, First Nation entrepreneurs in this province. I also sit on the national board of the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association, uh, which is like Credit Union Central, because there's 56 AFIs across the country that belong to that association. And I'm a member of the Council Ventures Board of Directors that oversees this uh, alternative energy project. And I also have uh, my NDP activities that I do with Ag and Rural Life as well as president of my constituency. So I'm very busy with all the things that I do in all the communities that I serve uh, within Saskatchewan and across this far country of Canada. Uh, I have uh, uh, the privilege, and I call it a privilege, to have uh, started this project back in 2009 as a wind study project, whereas the federal government had a uh, anemometer, which is a wind tower, and uh, they didn't want to spend the money to send it back to Ontario, so I was. Uh, fortunate enough to be in the room when they were talking about it and told them, well, I'll take it and no, I'll start the project. <laughs> so, having said that, we partnered with the Saskatchewan Resource Council and uh, we went into the research mode and we gathered the data for our, uh, our future project. And uh, for five years we gathered that data and that data became valuable uh, for the business development piece. And the, in 2012, the Casas Wind Energy Development Limited was established. It currently holds a 20 year power purchase agreement with SAS Power with 15 years left. Uh, the corporation runs an independent audit. Uh, the Saskatchewan Resource Council provides the technical oversight. Our long-term maintenance agreement is with Ericon for the turbine maintenance. And in 2018, we successfully renegotiated the power purchase agreement with SAS Power to a maximum contract through the addition of our solar panels, as you see in the video. With the installation of the 400 kilowatt uh, uh, power solar panels, we also have an additional 100 kilowatt of equipment procured and waiting for a contract opportunity as we uh, plan to expand our project. Our current project is about $2.3 million. And I say current because it doesn't cover the cost of the research that was undertaken in the first five, five years, nor the uh, ongoing monitoring uh, of that time of the uh, wind tower and the construction and erection of that wind tower. We had to, uh, it was amazing, there was all kind of talk about alternative energy, but there was no money from the government to uh, back that talk, and we basically had to finance the project on our own during the first years of the research. Uh, the current project of 2.3 million consists of a $900,000 grant from Western Economic Diversification that was just uh, secured last year. $800,000 from uh, Indian Affairs for the business ready portion to get the land ready uh, 
about it, surveying it, and uh, preparing it for uh, development. 180,000 came from the Council's First Nation as uh, liquidity cash, and 500,000 was debt financed through the First Nations Bank of Canada. And that's just the start of the project to launch it. It's, it's by no means uh, uh, completed to where it needs to go. And uh, some of the reasons why the nation got into the project is it's uh, organic for us, it's part of our values, and it makes sense. It makes sense for everyone. It makes sense for our future generations, and it makes sense for us as human beings who live on planet Earth today. The renewable power presents an opportunity for the First Nations to develop practical ways of wealth creation that will honor our traditions and our collective ownership. The land that the, the, the project is on is the treaty land entitlement land that the nation acquired through its treaty land entitlement claim. And it was strategically purchased and it was strategically set idle so that uh, we could plan to develop around the, uh, the railroad expansion that was occurring in the next 10 year period when we purchased that land. Uh, strategic in nature that we did, we wanted to minimize the impact. We didn't want to continue big block box store developments. We did not want to continue high end commercial and development. We wanted to provide alternative energy to the main grid. Canada's first utility scale wind turbine with a lithium ion battery storage system was installed by our nation three kilometers east of Regina, Saskatchewan in 2013. The site now has added solar power to increase profitability and investigate the potential for a solar wind battery hybrid system. The intent is to demonstrate a system that can harness wind and solar power and provide a more cons consistent power output for on-grid and perhaps on-grid, off-grid applications. The, uh, the nation is the project sponsor. Uh, as I've mentioned, we partnered with SRC. Uh, we have uh, our objectives is, is to generate sustainable wealth, to demonstrate the reliability and durability of solar wind storage system, to develop a system that could repl be replicated at other sites and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and criteria air contaminants. The benefits that we receive is its emissions-free electrical generation, converting intermittent power to more continuous electrical production for on-grid and off-grid applications, a greater penetration of renewable energy on the electrical grid, the potential to meet energy peak loads with wind power that can be dispatched at peak times, managing distributed energy sources, and meeting community energy and contributing to Canada's electrical supply with intermittent wind power. The system consists of two soft batteries with an output of 400 kilowatt and a storage capacity of 744 kilowatt per hour. 800 kilowatt Intercon uh, e tur E53 turbine with a hub height of 73 meters. The 340 kilowatt, kilowatt of solar power plus 57 kilowatt of net metered solar power supplied by Skyfire Energy. While connected to the grid, the system should be capable of supplying sufficient electricity to meet the annual energy requirements of 203 homes. We could service our entire nation with, with this system. Uh, lithium ion battery systems have very fast response times, hence they are capable of smoothing the variable output of the wind and dispatching power at peak times when it has the highest value as shown in some of the graphics. Uh, I have some graphics and things like that, uh, graphs that uh, I'll share so that they can uh, share the information later on. Uh, we basically, uh, the next steps in our project will be applying to the power generation partners, 
program offered by SAS Power to add additional solar to this site to maximize invested investment in the upgraded interconnection to the grid. CAUSA's ultimate goal is for the site to become a utility scale solar development. The team of CAUSA's is actively developing these plans uh, as we speak and uh, will continue to pursue this opportunity in the future. I have to say that some of our challenges have been with government uh, simply because uh, as we develop the, uh, the lithium battery site and uh, preparing for the power purchase agreement, part of the challenge that we're facing is we can't sell our power to them because our equipment is too new and innovative and SAS Power's equipment is too old and outdated. So to do that uh, connection, it's going to be about a $1.3 million investment and they don't want to pay it. So in order for us to sell it, we would have to pay that investment and, uh, and, and thus uh, increase the premium to, to sell that uh, energy back to the main grid. So uh, in short, uh, I guess the government likes to talk, but they don't like to put the money where their mouth is. Uh, the nation has invested a lot of time and energy, and this is considered a patient capital investment because it's, it's, it, it creates very little uh, jobs at this point. Uh, the plan in the future is to tap the water, the uh, energy source, create a utility company, and through there we'll be uh, selling our utility to the uh, retailing our utility to the uh, subscribers that subscribe to that uh, utility that we will be offering. Uh, we also have uh, uh, another corporation that we call Oasis Neolani, which is uh, the energy company that's Department of Trans Alpha on 175 milliwatt wind partnership program. Uh, that RFP was not successful last year, however, we are preparing for uh, another rebid for the next SAS Power Procurement uh, Initiative that's going to be happening uh, this spring. So, uh, in short, uh, I'd like to say that uh, this project is very dear to our hearts. We're very passionate about uh, minimizing the environmental imprint that we impose upon Mother Earth. And as stewards of the land, we're very much uh, cognizant of our role. And uh, we plan to do what we can through our business development to ensure that we can uh, minimize our environmental footprint, as well as I think this is an excellent theme for uh, Rainbow, Saskatchewan, and that uh, it's just a shame that uh, there's only one dot in Saskatchewan and, and that there should be a lot more with a lot more government uh, initiatives and support. I have been safe. Thank you so much, Lucy, for, for that presentation and for sharing the vision of the renewable project at the Kawasas First Nation, as well as some of the challenges um, that have been faced so that we might all learn from, from that experience and uh, move forward. Next up, I have two community groups uh, representatives that I want to introduce. We're going to